All right, guys, welcome back to Build Tune Race. New Bernie shirts are in. If you guys want to get one, buildtunerace.com. I'll put the link in the description. But today we are pulling apart the engine finish. We know that there's a hole in the piston. We looked in there from when we got the pan off the other day. We're going to roll it over today, get the heads off of this thing, and look down in there. And hopefully it did not get into the cylinder wall. If it got in the cylinder wall and the blocks kind of might need some repair, then you might need to find a different direction. If the block looks good and all I got to do is pop a new piston in it, clean everything, and swap out the reluctor wheel because I want to go to a 58X, get rid of that stock reluctor wheel, then we might head that direction. So let's find out kind of what the future holds. Grab a couple 10 mils, pull the steam vent kit off, then I'll get all the rocker arms off, and do the head studs, and then see what we have going on here. You haven't broke loose for the computer yet. <laughs> Alex comes in and does the heavy work. I just zip them off with an impact. It's waiting on you. <laughs> Good. I love it when people wait on me. Right? Well, not like that. That means I get to be spoiled. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I was reading on there. I saw watched something, actually, where they said to take the head off in reverse of how you torque it down. I wouldn't think that would really matter, but maybe. So. I don't know. I don't know how much I agree or don't agree. You let me know what you guys think, but they more or less said whatever pattern you use to torque the heads to do it in reverse, which I guess makes sense. I don't know if it really would matter when you're loosening them up, but uh, we might do it just to be safe. One down, a whole lot more to go. One side down, one side to go. All these are the same, but I always like to keep them separated. So then if there's an issue or we find something as we tear it apart, we can go back and look at specific cylinders and stuff like that. So just trying to keep everything in order. So every time you do anything with an LS, the easiest way to figure out torque specs is use Google. Real easy, LS torque specs, pulls it up. There's my diagram. So I'll do this in reverse. Uh, we'll take them all off in reverse, and then we'll get the head off this thing. Set this up right here in the head. Do each one at a time. Well, I'm pretty sure that the head studs on the top of an ARP, because they talk about like half inch head studs, so these are actually standard. So this will be like a, a half inch. That's half inch socket, so. That one, yeah, that feels pretty good right there. And a small extension and we'll be in business. I think I've seen it up here. Yep, there it is. It does feel like it's tighter. Yeah. Yeah, I think that ARP on the top side goes, goes the other way. Oh, almost forgot my diagram, so I'm just gonna go gung-ho and just start unbolting stuff. So it is actually 15, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, so all the top ones get done first. Outside and inside. Or 13, my bad, yeah. Oh, yeah, backwards. Oh, backwards. Messing me up, man. Amen. <laughs> we'll get there one way or another. Oh, my Lanta. We have them bad boys torqued to keep the boosts in. 10. Nine. Nine. Outside eight. eight. I think that's like 90 foot pounds or something that everybody does on those. Yeah. Zip everything off. Pop the head off of this thing and see how bad it is. Did I already lose the freaking washer? Oh, it's still on there. Of course. All right, guys, what do you think? Is it gonna have the cylinder wall or not? We'll get it off here, but. Come on, baby, there it is. This oil's like just slick enough and just sticky enough to be a pain either way. Yeah. It like sticks to the surface, but then when you're trying to grab it, it's slick. All right, this head's all loose. Let's see what we got. I don't know. 
I melted it. Looks like I got a little sidewall. Let's see. I actually got the head a little bit. It just some of the melted crap off the piston it got. I mean, it more looks like a lot of the stuff from the piston is sitting on the cylinder wall. It doesn't look like it actually it got into the cylinder wall that I can tell. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell right now. But definitely, it melted it different. Like last time, it blew it all apart. This looks like it just got like a hot spot in it and melted it right there. So that's pretty crazy. But we will uh, have to look at it and see. We might, I don't know, it's hard to say. I can see all that little crap on the cel cylinder wall. But if it's like surface, like whenever it melted the piston, if all the material jumped like up onto the cylinder wall and just kind of like coated it, and then it go into the cylinder wall will be all right. If it melted into the cylinder wall where it gets like a pit after it gets cleaned up, then that's where we're gonna have an issue. But as of right now, looks like I just blew a bunch of aluminum around in there and hopefully it just kind of disintegrated the piston and didn't hurt the block. So far, I can't really tell. I can feel a good little scratch down in there on the cylinder wall, but that might be able to clean up. I'm just hoping that it more or less a hone will clean this up and then we'd be all right, but it's hard to say. This cylinder's actually got a bunch of little scratches in it, didn't even hurt it. It's kind of weird. You guys see that? So this cylinder, looking at it, it's got a bunch of little scratches on the cylinder wall. I mean, they're not deep either, but it's weird, because like this shows no, no scratches, real nice cross hatching. But like that cylinder wall, for some reason, has some lines in it. Kind of crazy. Huh. Well, the more you know. Keep digging into it and see what we find. Hopefully the other side looks good though, all the way around. Get this head gasket off. I don't really see that it like pushed a head gasket. If you guys were wondering, this was actually running the Cometics, not the LS9s or the Cometics that are. So these are a three layer with a thick inner layer. Uh, Cometics, some people run Cometics, some people run the LS9s. These were the Cometics. They did good up till, you know, 21 pounds of boost. We never had an issue. So we had a little chunk that was kind of sitting up here, which this is where it melted the piston. So there's a bunch of stuff up here. So I was just trying to look to see, and a little bit of it peels off. So there's a bunch of bunch of stuff on there, and it mostly is peeling off. So we'll see if it ends up. Can't really tell that it got into the cylinder wall yet. Like that stuff right there. I think you can kind of scrape it off right there, so. I assume that's just material that came off the piston there. It was hot enough that it kind of mashed itself into the cylinder wall a little bit there. So hopefully that just kind of peels off and the hardened surface of the cylinder wall is still okay. Get all this oil out of there. I was looking at it, this cylinder, this cylinder had oil from it being flipped over, which is kind of weird, but uh, I could have just been from it sitting there, flipped or whatever. So we'll get the other side out, look at it. I just want to get the oil out so I could look all the way around the cylinder wall and see if there's anything else real bad. I don't want to speak too soon, but hopefully we, we get lucky and a good hone will clean it up. So I'll probably have to take it to the machine shop, which is a good idea, have them break this motor completely down, go through, put it in their hot tank and all that, clean it up real good, and then see exactly exactly what it needs. Last one. All right, there we go. Last one loosened up. Slip these things off. Should be all right. Mm -mm. Oh. First. Always get the most random smells. It's like you want to do one bolt and you get like this weird smell. <laughs> Hmm, real nice. Yeah, just got a little bit. Did you? It's like <laughs> yeah. burnt oil. <laughs> yeah, under one bolt. Do, 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 do. It's Mario. Here we go, second head's coming off. Maybe, if I don't grab the head gasket with it. Well, those pistons are in one piece at least, so that's solid. This would be the cylinder right here that it had the hurt plug in it. 
which I don't see any pitting on the piston or anything like that. So get this one set over here. Looks okay. You can see though that this cylinder, even on the piston, like this one has a little bit of black in each cylinder. And this one appears to be like what would be possibly slightly leaner, I guess. Uh, I'll show you guys this head too while we're right here. So this is the one that had the hurt cylinder. You guys can see where it has a bunch of the crap, so this head will have to be kind of disassembled and cleaned and stuff because there's a bunch of aluminum, melted aluminum sitting here on the head. So we'll have to get, get the heads cleaned up. Not a big deal there though. Those are uh, ASCAS 220 trick flows. They've been great heads. So as you guys can see, here's where all the crap off the piston hit it. I'm not seeing like the first time you can see where it kind of melted it, but the first time it had like a deep gouge in like the cylinder wall, it had like a nick out of it where you could see actually like the cast iron. This looks like it's just a lot of the piston material sitting on top of the cylinder wall. So hopefully that's all that we got going on here. Uh, I won't really know until they really clean it up and look. And then this little spot over here with all this crap sitting up here. So hopefully it didn't like crack it or anything. They'll have to check everything when they do it. Um, but it'll be worth looking at. I don't know guys, we'll, we'll find out. It's not as bad as it probably could be on initial looking at it. So we might just hopefully be able to clean up that cylinder wall even if they just have to like touch it just barely. The thing with a, like an LQ4 block is you don't want to go more than like 30 over because then the cylinder walls start getting thin and then you run the risk of cracking a cylinder wall. People will even do it just like this. So there's a fine line there, but maybe if they just take a slight cut at it or hopefully just hone it, it's what I'm hoping, and put just, you know, re-ring it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the motor over right now, pop that rod and piston out of it, and just kind of look at the piston, show you guys exactly what happened with it, and then we'll, we'll know, and then I'll probably take this whole, like, short block to the machine shop, let them, you know, disassemble, clean everything, probably rod, or uh, put new rod and main bearings in it, swap out the reluctor wheel, like some of that stuff we can do here, but like, I don't have the machine to hone it, I don't have the machine, to clean it or any of that stuff. So, you know, it's just really not that bad. Take it to them, let them do it. It's what they do every day. I don't mess with motors every day. So uh, let them do the engine work on this thing. That's who I've had do it before and it's, it's worked out well. So uh, let's get it rolled over and pop a, pop a rod and piston out of this thing. See what the uh, rod bearings look like after three seasons and a bunch of 17 to 20 pound pulls. I wonder if you gotta give them a little tappity tap to get it to Probably. pop loose. It's been a long time since I pulled a rod out of a motor. A couple little love taps. Come on, baby. There it is. Uh, honestly, we got a little wear to them. More over here than anything. Nah. Hey! Got it. Let's see what it looks like up here. So, this side of it looks pretty, pretty good, as far as the bearings go. Not a, not a bearing professional, so honestly I don't know a lot, but hey, you guys can see, come down in here and just melted away that little top corner right here. A little bit, push the, push the ring out on it. Pretty crazy. This is the old number six, and this is the number five this time. So as you guys can see, it definitely not as bad. Not as good, but that's where the reluctor wheel went bad on it at one point and missed it, I think, and lifted the ring land on it in boost. This doesn't really show anything, which is, what's crazy is so last time it melted the piston down in this corner, which again, this is six, this is five this time but it actually melted the piston where it lifted the ring land on that one. So the position of the ring land where it lifted it last time in that cylinder. So that's kind of interesting when you start looking at it like that on, uh, on how that worked out. So pretty interesting. But yep, yeah, that's, that's a melted piston, boys. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this crank sensor out of here too. It looks really close. 
This crank sensor, if you guys remember from that video, all I did was pop it in and make that last pass on the motor. So if it already has rub marks from the crank sensor, then we already know that the distance between this and the reluctor wheel is way too close. I'm curious to see if it already shows it or if it was, we know it was showing it on the other ones, but how quickly did it or was it over time that it kind of showed it? So yeah, already. So right there you guys can see the two different rub marks from the reluctor wheel and they're not even that even. So there's definitely something going on with that thing either spreading apart, which I was kind of wondering is rotating this thing around and looking to see if I could tell if it has like more gap or less gap in certain areas on it. So uh, pretty crazy. I don't know. It's hard to tell, but yeah, we can go ahead and spin it around. Just see, all I'm looking at was I was just gonna look to see if I could see any diff distance and gap. Like, I, I can't really tell if it's, it looks almost maybe tighter there. And then, like it opens up over here more. I don't know, without actually having a measurement on it and stuff, it's hard to tell. But that'll be going away for sure. I believe all you have to do to go from the black 24X to a gray 58X and the holly is you have to move a wire and then create it, make it 58X in the software. I'm hoping that's all I gotta do, I gotta do some research. So I'll take this to him. I might tear it apart with him, maybe I can bring you guys along with me. I'll ask him if we can possibly make a video, uh, but get the main caps off of it, kind of look at everything, and then definitely look at, I guess that reluctor wheel, some people tack them on, and then there's like a little jig that can mount it and help hold it in place and like selects it. So what makes me wonder is if it's moved at all, so then it's actually making the timing go out of the motor more and more than it moves, which is crazy that it already has big rub marks on it after literally one pull on that thing. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta figure that out. It's what we thought it was from the last video, melted piston. It's looking pretty decent, like the cylinder wall might be all right. So I'm, that's pretty much where I'm headed. I got that piston out looking at it. I think the cylinder wall's okay, but we won't know until it's cleaned and probably at least honed or whatever. I don't want to sit there and like pick at the cylinder wall too much. I don't want to create some big like scratches in it. So I, I know that some of it's coming off. So I'll let them do it however they want to do it to separate it. Hopefully in the hot tank or whatever, it'll help remove some of that as well. So I'm probably just going to leave the engine pretty much like it is. I'll pull like the uh, pickup tube, maybe the balancer and front cover and stuff off of it. Take it down there and have the machine shop just go over it. The guy that's built these engines before and see if he'll look at it, go over everything and see what the simplest way we can get it. Hopefully I can just throw a new piston in that cylinder, swap the reluctor wheel, put this thing back together. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm gonna shoot for. That's the most savings of money and it'll go back in, run it, and then build everything else on the car to more or less plan for when it goes to six bolts. So all I gotta do is turn everything up at that point. So this will, hopefully it'll work out pretty decent. Hopefully I'm not, not too screwed here. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to see more from the Camaro build, the LS stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.